This is Dan Abbott. I'm doing this video for the students in my SolidWorks class at Southern Maine Community College in preparation for the Certified SolidWorks Associate exam. The practice exam that you have to take includes a single part and a single assembly. What it doesn't include is a type of part that usually shows up on the exam. So I just want to give you an example of something like or similar to what you might find in the exam so you understand how to approach it. And that would be something you have to do with the Revolve. So a lot of times on the exam there's something that looks generally like this. They'll give you all the information. Unfortunately, they don't use NZ standards for presenting technical information, so you might have to look at more, multiple images to get the dimensions you want. But this one has a um, technical drawing that represents the way that you would normally see a drawing in an ASME standard drawing. So just to let you know what we're going for here, there's the part right there. So if I want to go to the beginning. You're going to start by revolving this so it looks like that. What you need is to see what the cross section is. Now the cross section of this in that position is all the area you see in blue, not both sides, just the top. So if you look over here, this is a half section. If you look in the drawing, that might not look quite the same, but it's everything in the cross section and the fact that there's no cross section uh, hatch pattern here is simply because when you cut down through this, you're cutting right down through a void. But you're not going to start with the voids because you can't put them in with the revolve. So you can look, look at this area right here, but only on one side. Don't try to do both sides. It won't work. Now, the sketch for that looks like this. Now, there's two ways to approach this. There are some fillets in here. You can put those in after the fact. You can put those in now. If I put them in now, that means I can then <clears throat> mirror them to the other side on this. And that's probably why I did that when I first created this. You can also just make square corners there and put the fillets in after you do the revolve. But that's the shape you want to start with right there. You'll notice it's above the center line to compensate for the fact there's a hole in it. After that, you would then go ahead and punch one of those openings in here like this. And you would also put fillets on that after the fact. But if we look at the sketch on this and look at it from the front, there are a couple of ways to do this. The simplest way is to draw a center line that goes down through here. Since there's an angle between two lines, <clears throat> if you draw one of the lines, mirror it to the other side of that center line, and then put in the angle, that takes care of centering that. Um, and I'll show you when I make, I'm going to do a quick demo of it. When I show you when I make that, and there's an alternative that you could use, then it tells me that the radius is 225. I have to change it to a diameter, although you can, of course, display that as a radius if you want. Um, hmm. Maybe you can only do that. Oh, right there, display options. Yeah, display as radius. So you can do that after you put it in just to make sure you get the right size in there. I wouldn't bother. You know, you can, well, I wouldn't bother on this one because it's easy enough to do the math. But, you know, and that just to make sure you know what you're doing here. So that bounds the area that you want to cut. Now you can trim all this up and come up with a single closed surface or closed area, but you don't have to. I didn't in this case, and the reason I didn't have to do that is when I did this and did the cut, what I cut was not the whole thing, but selected contours. So in other words, I clicked inside those two shapes, and then that's what I cut. Um, after that, you put the fillets in if you've got corners like this. And those fillets go in there first because you're going to do an array. You want to put those in. There are a couple ways to do that. I'll show you that when I get to the next part. Then you do a circular array. Does that. Make sure you have the right number of them. Then you do the cut extrude. And usually, like all the rest of the um, parts you have to make, usually it'll tell you what the mass properties are and ask you, I mean, ask, it will ask you what the mass properties are and it'll give you four choices. In this case, the mass property is supposed to be 17399.33 grams. So if we go over to evaluate, mass properties, 17399.33, that's exactly what it is. Um, and that's only, by the way, if you add the material in there correctly. And it gives you the, when it gives you the problem, it also gives you the mass density of that material. And you want to check and make sure that that is correct. So if I go to Edit Material, and I find the AISI304, and then check the mass density, make sure it's the same. 
Now this one's going to be in kilograms per cubic meter. Normally on the exam they give it in grams per cubic millimeter, which means that that would be a decimal point would be moved over three places. But just make sure the numbers themselves are correct when you look at the units. All right, let's take a look at how to actually make this. We'll just throw this one away. All right, so I'm going to start a new file. When you start the new file, absolutely do not forget to set the units or you will not get the right answer. So Oh, you know what? I think I just picked assembly instead of part file. So new, I did. Part file. Okay, now this is set to IPS by default. If you've got yours set up for millimeters, grams, and seconds by default, you're all set. But whatever you do, make sure it does that. And absolutely make sure you don't pick meters, kilograms per second, because you'll have a part that's massive. Um, and don't pick inches. You'll also have a part that's massive. You're never going to get the right mass. <clears throat> so now we're going to sketch and I would recommend sketching it in the same orientation that it shows you that in so you can check and, and for any kind of possible error easily. So that means I'm going to right, uh, draw the cross section on the right side view. Go over here to the center line. I've got symmetry in both directions. So I'm going to put two center lines on here. One that goes through the axis where the hole is and one that goes through the center of right down through here. So I'll start by putting a circle up here. That happens a lot. If you start to move even a little bit, you, know, you have to click and let go. So I'm going to put a dimension on here. That dimension is going to be, it says radius of 15. Obviously I'm going to put a 30 because it's a circle right now. <clears throat> Again, if you really want to, you can change the display. Now I'm going to indicate, do I have a distance? Yeah. Okay, so the diameter to the center of that is 500. So I'm going to go and say from here to here. And when you do this, go down below. Don't go up here. If you go down below, you can put in the diameter. If you go up above, you're going to put in the radius. So now that is in the right location right now. And at the moment, I have a fully defined sketch, which is what I want. Now what I'm going to do is offset that line. No, I think I'll do it a little differently. What I'm going to do is just sketch from right about here, start to sketch the hub, come out, go up, go in, and I'm going to just do a, like that, bring that up here until it just touches here. And then make sure that you've got a tangency here and here, although you can put this in after the fact. So I got my two tangencies there. That touches, so it's coincident. Excellent. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror everything I just sketched to the other side. So I'll mirror this. And again, there's other ways to do this as well. I'm just showing you some things the way I would do it. But don't get too panicky if you don't do it exactly this way. And don't even try to memorize this exactly. If it makes sense to you, that's what you want to do. I come up here. I'll trim this out. So it looks like that, and I should get a closed shape, and I do. Now, I could just ro revolve this and then put that fillet in after the fact, or I could put the fillet in, in the sketch itself. So I probably should have done that first, but I didn't. So I got those two lines right there. And it's 10, so I'm going to change that to a 10. Is that right? It is. Okay, so, and I could do both sides. I could also have done it first and then mirrored it, but I'll do both of them like that. Okay, now I'm going to start putting in my dimensions. So I got one dimension in there that kind of sizes everything. Next one I'm going to do is from here to here. We'll make that eight. That looks good. We'll make this one right here 10, because I never just drew an arc there. I didn't make it any specific size. And then I'll make the d distance from here to here drop down below so we can put it in as a radius of 120. I'll show you why that's 120. They're right there. And then I'll do the next one which is the hole. Hole go in here and that one's got a size of 80, diameter of 80. Now I think the only thing left to do on this would be from here to here. And that is 80 as well. Now, students in my class are going to have this as a handout, and that's fully defined. Um, 
those of you who might want to watch this from someplace else though let me just do this for you I'm going to open that up and expand it so it's as large as it'll go and just pause a minute so you can do a screen capture on this if you wanted to try this at home without having the actual handout that's probably plenty of time for you to do that so let's move this on up here again move it over here Again, the reason I'm doing this is because the practice exam itself does not include a, a part like this, and yet I'm almost certain you'll see a part like this. This is one of those tricky things with windows where you can't really get a hold of this thing to move it very easily. So we'll just bring it down here now, make it a little easier. There we go. And I'll zoom out on it. Oops, that's the wrong one. Oh, that's the midterm. Here we go. There we go. <clears throat> and again, those of you who are not in the class, I do this with, in one take, so I'm not going to redo it to fix that little glitch. Now I go to Features. I'm going to do a Revolve Boss or Base, and I have to pick the center line since I have two of them. It comes in like that, and that's going to be my first step. Not a bad idea before starting, by the way, to go ahead and put the material in. So if I go up here to do edit material, I have to find the material listed. Now down here I've listed AISI 304, which is right here. But don't just do that and then look away. Look and make sure that the mass density is 8,000. It probably will be just fine, but I have seen situations where they give given a steel like 1020, and students will see that there are multiple 1020s, and they'll pick the wrong one, and the mass density is a little different. So it's a good idea to pay attention to that. Now, bring that out like that again. All right, so now we've got this area in the middle. So what I want to do next is to cut that out. So I'll sketch on that surface. Usually better to sketch on the surface than it is to sketch on one of the one of the planes in the uh, part itself. So sketch here. I'm going to start with a center line so that that part stays centered straight up and down. And I'm just going to draw that. Yeah, I'm just going to draw that here just to use it as a center line. Now I do have to have a circle, and that circle is going to go up like about there. Next one's going to go about here. And that's for that arc here and that arc there. The corners we'll put in after the fact. So we'll do a dimension on the outside. And that's going to be 450. And again, you can change that so it reads as a radius if it makes you feel better. But you don't need to if you can do the math and don't make a mistake. 140 on that one. So now I'll draw one line that goes from the center, goes all the way up through. I could just stop it right here. And then I'm going to mirror that line about this, and then put a dimension between them, an angular dimension between them. And because I did the mirroring, they're going to be in the right orientation and do that. So one way to do this is this. And then when I do the cut, I'm going to pick the two contours. So if I come back over here, and then do an extruded cut. Go to the lower area with select contours. You have to select two because you've got that in there, but those contours work. Come back over here, you can do up to surface. If you just have to have a closed surface, you can trim all these things out. The only problem if you do that, you want to really pay attention. You always want a fully defined sketch on these. So suppose I decided, this is the way I do things, I want to trim all this stuff out. And I want to trim that out and I want to trim this out, and I want to trim those things out. Now I have the closed surface, but you notice those lines are now blue <clears throat> because this no longer goes to the center, so now it doesn't know exactly where to put this. Now everything probably will be okay unless you try to do something like that. So if you're trying to do something like that, the solution is going to be to put a dimension in here, and that dimension should be half of the one you've got there. So we do that. Now it centers the whole thing so everything comes out right. Um, except that, you know what? Okay, so if it's blue, something's wrong. So I'm going to move that. Now it's got a point too. So what I'm going to do is I want to take that line right there and the origin. 
and I want to make those things coincident. Now it's all black because it's pointing right at that center. Again, either way you do it is just fine. When you do the extruded cut on this, you can go through all if you want. I am an up to surface guy to avoid problems that can come up with through all and more complex parts. So it looks like that. Now when you put your fillet in, that fillet is going to be a standard fillet with a radius of 10, shows right here. Um, so when you do the items to fill it, you can, if you have manual, yeah, you can just grab this right here, and then you're going to get this little bar here that allows you, if you want, to say, well, what if we just grab that? Now it's going to put all of them in in the right place, change the number to 10, or you can pick them one at a time. Don't panic if you think, wait a minute, there was a faster way to do that, but I picked them one at a time. If you pick them one at a time, it's going to give you the same thing. Put them in first, though. Don't wait until after you do your your um, circular pattern, because if you do, you're going to have to put them into each one of those. In that case, I would undo the circular pattern, then I would put them in, and then I'd redo the circular pattern. So we go into linear pattern, circular pattern. Um, the direction means pick something with an axis that goes in that direction. Because fillets were the last thing I did, they're already pre-selected. Put the cut in there like that as well. I already have an 8 in there. I must have done this once already. Come like that. Now, that would give you almost everything you need. So then when you're done, you're going to put that keyway in. Keyways should be dimensioned from the back side of the hole to the bottom. They don't always do these things correctly on the surf on the exam though, so you might not see it done like this if there is a keyway. But I'm gonna draw on that surface right there. I'm just gonna draw a center line that goes from here and just have it go up a little bit like that. Yeah. Uh, and what I'll do now, well, you know, just to save myself a little, I'm gonna hold the shift key down, pick that edge, and go to this end right here. And that's going to allow me to dimension to the back side of the hole, which is 85.4. Shows right there. Okay, so now that's what the that's the depth that I need. So what I can do now is an offset. If I offset those two entities right there and say they have to be offset 22, well, I'm going to offset them 11, but do it bi-directionally. Then it does that. And the reason I put the dimension in is so now I don't have to do it after the fact. So I'll just go across here like that. Now, I could close this up any way I wanted and do a contour. Or I could take, let's take that edge right there and do a convert entities on that edge. And then, just to get ourselves a closed shape, in case that's the way you like to work, we'll do that. You have a closed shape. It's fully defined. That's all you need. Now we're going to go back over to Features, Extruded Cut up to surface. There's a surface that I want right there. Looks like that. Now take a look at it in the same orientation that they show it to you and just kind of take a look overall and make sure you've got everything you need. Then go and check and see what your mass is. Make sure you've identified the material before you do this or you'll get a surprise. And when you do make sure that when you do check the mass, mass properties. Make sure that the units it's being given in are the units you want. If it comes out and it tells you that that's pounds, go to options and under options change from custom, uh, change from uh, document settings to custom. It'll probably come up in millimeters if you picked um, millimeters, grams, and seconds, but it doesn't always, so you might have to change it there under options. 17399.33, check and see if that's the right answer because like most of them, well, I think all the parts, the first one they give you is always multiple choice. I got exactly that answer, and so now that I'm confident I can pick that right answer and then go ahead and modify it. They will probably tell you to do this in pieces. In other words, they'll probably say, first make this, then ask for the mass, so you give the mass there, and then you would move on, and then it'll say, now do that, or do this, might ask you again and they might even do a third thing and have to ask you to do something else so just whatever it does that's when you're going to check the mass so that's um a possible type of part you're going to have when i say possible i'm going to say very very likely